Con te dovrò combattere, non ti si può pigliare come sei. I tuoi difetti sono talmente tanti che nemmeno tu li sai. Sei peggio di un bambino capriccioso, la vuoi sempre vinta tu. Sei l'uomo più egoista e prepotente che abbia conosciuto mai. Ma c'è di buono che al momento giusto tu sai diventare. In un attimo tu Sei grande, grande, grande Le mie pene non me le ricordo più Io vedo tutte quante le mie amiche Sono tranquille più di me Non devono discutere ogni cosa come tu fai fare a me. Ricevono regali e rose rosse per il loro compleanno. Dico sempre di sì. Non hanno mai problemi e sono convinte che la vita è tutta lì e invece no, e invece no la vita è quella che tu dai a me in guerra tutti i giorni sono viva sono come piace a te grande come te sei grande solamente Yes, no, we're not live yet. I'm going live now and then I call you in. It's all right. Little darling, it's been a long time. And good afternoon, Giada Valenti here from Las Vegas. Benvenuti, good afternoon today. It's a wonderful day. So it's a beautiful day. As you know, always uh, we do sign language for all the people that cannot hear, which is a, a major problem during this COVID-19. So 2 p.m. in Las Vegas, but of course I, I know many of you are watching from the East Coast, which is 5 p.m. in the afternoon for you guys, New York, Chicago, it's 4 p.m. So because it's central time 
And uh, we always have a lot of people watching from uh, Europe. So, buon pomeriggio, buonasera a voi, because it's uh, 23 p.m. at night for you guys. Ora 23 della sera per la mia mamma, il mio papà e tutti i miei cugini che ci guardano, i amici dall'Italia. 22 p.m. for you guys in England and in Ireland. I know you guys are always there. And good morning to the Australian friends. We always have these people that woke up at 5 in the morning or 7 in the morning. I wonder, one of these days, I have to ask you guys, do you wake up for me or are you just waking up because you have to go to work and do something? Uh, is uh, Australia open to work? That's my question, you know. Uh, where are you watching from? That's always, and I see a lot of you appearing there, uh, you know, only on Friday and Monday. I can really read on my big television your comments and we can talk to each other but today actually I'm going to try to also include you and have a question for my guest of today because uh, today you will hear we have a special guest that can help us to keep positive and happy and uh, to be fearless and see the future as bright as we are supposed to see it no matter what is the hour today tomorrow is going to be better so we always start of course before I introduce my guest with the event in history today thanks to my chief editor there in Sacramento, Doug Hartline. Doug, how are you? I want to thank you. This is the sign for thank you. Uh, what do you do for me every day? So today is May 21st, 21 di maggio. So today in history, in 1819, the first bicycle in the United States were introduced in New York City. They were called switched walker of hobby horses. It's kind of funny, hobby horses? Anyway, so in 1881, the American Red Cross was founded by uh, Carla Burton, and uh, who had been a nurse during the American Civil War, and she was uh, inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1973. I'm very grateful to the Re American Red Cross, but the Red Cross in general, you know, is an organization that is existing in the whole world. My parents were not well during this COVID-19, you know, I shared with you the story a couple of weeks ago, and they have been helped incredibly by La Croce Rossa, that's the name of the Red Cross in Italy. So thank you to the Red Cross, I really love you guys. And today in history, in 1892, we go back to Italy, Ruggero's Leon Cavallo's opera Pagliacci, which means, which means clowns, premiered in Milan. If you have never seen it, guys, it's a very dramatic uh, story about uh, betrayed, a lot of death and sing, but the music is nevertheless spectacular. You remember Rudy Pagliaccio? It's beautiful. It's an anthem of uh, uh, smiling through hard time and when this guy is dying because he's been betrayed by his wife. So we always say one of these days we are going to go to Verona together and we're going to see an opera. And for sure, this one is one that is really worth watching. In 1960, today, Leontine Price uh, became the first Amer African American singer to sing the lead at Il Teatro La Scala in Milano. She had the role of Aida. And actually, I happen to owe another black singer that is an amazing soprano, personal friend, who also played Aida, but then at, at the Met in uh, New York City. And I see if I can have her as my guest one of these days, you're gonna love her. Today, in uh, 1982, the film Annie came out. It was uh, made from the Broadway musical and it was nominated for two Academy Awards and had, of course, some hit songs in that we all love. The sun will come out tomorrow with another one. And uh, it always does because uh, more than ever, uh, we know that uh, it's going to be better. You know why it's going to be better? Because every day we're going to be closer to the day that we go out and we are going to be able to hug each other. Do you remember that whole things we were doing in the past? We're going to be doing that soon. Birthday of today. Wow, we go very back in time uh, today, Doug, thanks to Doug. We go back to 90, uh, 120 BC, when the, in Italian history today, Aurelia Cotta, which means Aurelia Cooked, who knows why she had the name, was the mother of, of Julius Caesar, was born in Rome, Italy. It's unbelievable that we still know that she was born today. Wow, May 21st. And in 1872, Harry Warren, uh, an inventor, was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, he was most known for inventing the first electric clock in 1912. Uh, While well, General Electric brought his clock uh, uh, and the old company in 1943, so I guess we have to thank him 
and blaming maybe for that alarm clock that wakes up uh, us every morning and that's what uh, most of the time we want to do to the alarm clock but anyway thank you to Harry Warren for inventing that in 1904 music history Fats Walker was born in New York City Fats was an American jazz piano player organist composer violinist and singer very multi-talented and his Harlem uh, style style uh, laid the groundwork for modern jazz uh, for all the piano players a couple of weeks ago remember we had Tony Desair I should have asked him I'm sure he got inspired by him too 1904 uh, Robert Montgomery was born today he's a famous uh, Academy Award nominated actor born in Beacon New York here he is and he briefly left uh, the movies to become a world, a world hero and participated in D-Day. This weekend is going to be Memorial Weekend, so thank you to uh, Robert Montgomery, of course, uh, uh, for uh, his service. And D-Day must have been a, really a hell of a, um, of a thing. And uh, later he became the president of the Screen Actors Guild and he made many movies, uh, we know which one, uh, many of them. I know Doug is mentioned here, one that I also love personally. Here comes Mr. Jordan. Uh, that was later also remade by uh, Warren Beatty. And he helped direct the big John Wayne movie. They were expendable about World War II. I don't know if you guys ever seen it. It's one of my father's uh, favorite too. And he also had a famous uh, uh, daughter, Elizabeth, that was in the pictures that we showed before, who went to start as a lovely witch in the television series Bewitched, which I always loved. And um, in 1941, Ronald Isley was born, and he turns today 79. Look at him. Ronald was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. I, ho I know I have many Cincinnati friends watching. So, guys, happy birthday to your Ronald Isley. If he's your neighbor, go outside and uh, wish him happy birthday. Uh, he was, of course, the lead singer of a family music group called the Isley Brothers. They wrote and performed doo-wop songs, making it big with, of course, the song that we all know, Shout, in 1959, and uh, they were signing with RCA. And they went on with uh, many big hits, like uh, This Old Heart of Mine and I Guess I'll Always Love You. And the music has changed through the year, and doo-wop is not existing anymore, but Ronald is, has remained very uh, modern because he has uh, collaborated uh, with Rod Stewart and also with Burt Bacharach. And last Thursday of today, 1948, Leo... Sayer was born. Look at those hair. My goodness, that's very good. Is it 70, 80? I don't know. That hairdo looks like mine. Remember I show you Monday the pictures I had when I was performing in Holland? My big curly hair. That was 90s, but this maybe maybe this is also 90s. Uh, the, mine was 2000, but that's maybe it's 90s. So Leo Sayer was uh, is a British singer, of course, who made his um, uh, songs famous like uh, You Make Me Feel Like Dancing like I always feel when I wake up in the morning, and when I need you. I know that Doug loves that song because it's the song that, uh, uh, it's the soundtrack of uh, his love story with Susie. So, and he was born in Shoreham uh, by Sea in Sussex, England. I know I have a lot of English, uh, British people there, guys. So happy birthday to 1948. So how old would he be today? You guys make the calculation for me. You know that I know everything about uh, languages. I speak five and I'm very bad with numbers. So 1948. So guys, how old is Leo Say Sayer? Sawyer? Sayer? Sayer? You're going to tell me. My guest today, I thought it was, you know, this was Dutch week. So I started on Monday. I share all my previous life in uh, Holland and we had uh, Hans Klock the magician in sign language we had the magician then we had yesterday a singer we had gordon the superstar that you all guys actually by the way how uh, thank me for introducing people you have never heard but they are superstar in their country and i thought we needed to have some pep talk we needed to have some positivity and to show you that uh, no matter where we are in the world, there are people really that are trying to, to do like me, something to help us to keep sane and to keep happy. So my guest is that person today and you're going to love him. His name is Dan Jensen. We're going to ask him Jensen because normally Jensen would be Dutch, but Jensen is Dutch, but something else. So we're going to ask him. Um, what can I say about him? He's, he is the oldest of three brothers. Uh, one is a very famous radio personality in Holland, and the other one, I think, is a radio... A television presenter. So one is on the radio, one is on the television, and he decided to become 
a coach, a tennis coach. This is what he did. Actually, uh, he had studied law, but he decided to leave the suit and became a, a tennis trainer for 18 years. Very successful. And then of course, work, working in the in the field of sport, but we're going to ask him, he understood how important is also the mindset. He just have a book that came out in Holland that is doing very well, like how we can change our mindset. And I really love it. We're going to be talking about because, you know, normally we always talk about uh, and we share bad news. No, it's all about positivity. So without further ado, let's have some positive thoughts today with my guest. So let's see if he's there and we're going to ask him where he's calling from. And by the way, he's calling from Holland. So it's late at night for him. So we'll see, he may, he may appear in the pajama. So Dan, are you there? And there he is. I'm here. Welcome. How are you? Thank you, Jada. I'm, I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing great. How is life with COVID-19 in uh, Holland? And where are, you, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Wassenaar. And that's in the, on the west coast in the Netherlands. We have had a lovely day today, nice weather, and um, I'm very much looking forward to this uh, this conversation. Thank so you I, for you, doing. You wanted to know why it's Jensen and not Janssen. Si. But uh, my father is uh, from Denmark and my mother is from uh, from Holland, and Jensen is a very common name in Denmark. Does so it mean anything? Uh, does he have any meanings or no? No, no. No. No, no meaning. Just a beautiful no. Jensen. And do you still That's, speak? Do you speak? Do you still speak Danish or no? Yeah, I speak a little small Dansk, but nothing from my it. Very good. I speak a little Danish, but not not that much. <laughs> so, uh, I I personally have a good connection with uh, with Denmark because uh, um, my my uh, in my first year living in Lin in uh, London after I left the Netherlands they sang me for I think three years in a row to Denmark to uh, write they have a famous uh, writing uh, camp called the Depop and uh, as a songwriter we were sent to Denmark to write with some of the greatest uh, songwriter from all over the world but you have a, a lot of a very very um, um, accomplished some writing in Denmark and I've never learned Danish myself but I thought it was a beautiful country with beautiful people oh yes I agree thank you <laughs> you're thank very you. welcome and well I'm married to a Dutch so I love yeah. Holland too so you have the best of two worlds Dan <laughs> interesting sounds good Sounds, Sounds good, right? Good. So I have a few, I prepare a few question for you because uh, COVID-19, I mean, uh, it's, 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 um, you have this book that came out, uh, reset your mind. I think you have a poster of, of, on your back. Of course, it's in yeah. Dutch. Are you, my first question, are you planning to translate it into English for all of us for read it? Yes. Yeah. It came out in the, in the Netherlands uh, in uh, January and it's now uh, being sold, but also of course with this uh, COVID-19. It's not, uh, uh, people are not buying so many books in the stores, but online it goes very, very well. And, uh, uh, but I wrote a book uh, about uh, the importance of having a, um, a positive mindset. And it started on the tennis court. So uh, for the last 20 years, I have been working on a personal development with thousands of people. So it's not only on court, but also outside of course so on, i was also a mental coach and uh, the thing that interested me so much was that the number one question everybody asked me was what am i doing wrong <laughs> that was fascinating because from those thousands of people there's all kinds of different people different characters young old male female but to become the best tennis player or to become the best person they could be, they wanted the answer to that question. What am I doing wrong? Which is a wrong, wrong question, right? It is, but it is the, that was the most important question for them. And the interesting thing is they were also all aware of their personal weaknesses. So the, the striking thing for me was that when I just did the opposite. So I focused on what people do well and where they were best at. So what I was working on were not their weaknesses, but their strength. And the outcome is amazing because it is not, it, it's not only making people feel better, but it also uh, improves 
performance. And that it was so interesting. And that was the reason why I wanted to write this book to tell everybody how it works. Oh, yeah. It's funny because um, the whole world for, for already so, so many years is being busy about, uh, you know, healthy food and to train their body. But there's never been so much attention, for instance, also in school for young kids on how we have to train our brain because our thoughts is going to be what we are, what is going to happen in the world. So do you think that there's going to be a new trend after this uh, this COVID-19 where we all need, in to, to, need to, to be more positive? I think, so. I think so. And it's also interesting what you say is because we are now aware of what we have to do to keep our bodies healthy. So we eat healthy, we try to exercise, and then for a hundred years ago, we didn't know what to do, but now we know. But for me, the interesting thing was, how can we become also mentally strong? And without uh, uh, getting into the mysterious part of life. Just simple, just what you say to people, eat healthy, don't eat too much, exercise, but what can you do mentally? And what I did was, I have a representation that is maybe interesting. And if I ask people, what do you see on this white page? I Most see a black dot. A black dot. Mm -hmm. And the inter thing is that's how the brain works but for me this is a metaphor in life where the black dot stands for all the things we don't want so the things we want to avoid and the much bigger white page are the things we like we want more of but most of the times we don't focus on because we focus on the black dot in life and that's what also happens on the tennis court, and it happens outside the court in our normal lives, at school, everywhere. We are focusing on the things we don't like, and we are trying to get rid of that instead of focusing on the things we do like. It's true. You said sometimes, I mean, if I go on stage with uh, maybe because I'm learning a new song and I'm a little bit nervous and I, my, my thoughts when I put step on stage is as long as I don't forget my lyrics, the first things that happen to me, I'm going to forget the lyrics because somehow my brain has the thing. So it's funny that you say that. And I, I, I play golf. I went with JJ to play golf and I have, I've seen people failing at golf because before they were eating the ball, they were saying, as long as it doesn't go in the water and where was the ball going? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, that, and that, that's what makes sports so interesting. And also your, your, the, the, the golf example. Oh, that is so interesting. But as soon as you start thinking about not hitting it in the water, the ball goes into the water. And but, that's an interesting metaphor for life. It's very interesting. But how can we so change our focus? What can we do? Because for diet and healthy body, we know we have to eat less carbs, less calorie and go to the gym. But what, what can we do every morning? A simple thing that we can do to improve, to change the focus and give more. Yes. The best exercise is focus on what you are thankful for. So because if you do that, it maybe takes a couple of minutes a day, it changes your brain. But you have to continue doing that. And that is the, that is the, 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 the thing is, for example, if you talk about healthy food, you cannot eat healthy food once a week and think you're going to be healthy. It's the same thing with, as with mental health. You should continue. It is... You, it needs discipline. So when you... Oh, I think... Uh, it's one of the greatest exercises there is. It, 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 it is amazing. So uh, you're helping also people. I mean, we can... As soon as you are going to have it in English, uh, we are... Uh, you have to let me know then so I can uh, post it so everybody can buy the book. So who... I mean, you, you said that you play tennis, so you were into sport and... but. Where did you got this inspiration? Who inspired you to become, you're like me, like optimistic and you try to say, who inspired you to be the person that you are? It was all the people around me. Because the, the, the thing was, what, what I experienced on the, on the tennis court, I was thinking, wow, everybody should know this. And the thing also was, it was not my invention. 
it, it is something that for the last 50 years, psychology tells us this, but most people don't know it. And then the mental part still is in this mysterious corner and it should not be there. It is our focus is something we can practice. We can train it just as a muscle in the gym. It is yeah. just doing it, doing it. But because the black dot, it is, you can compare it. For example, if you tell people, well, eat healthy, but when you are very hungry and you can choose between a carrot and, 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 and something that has a lot of calories, you know what your brain says you should take, not the carrot. Not the carrot, yeah. And that is the hard part of it. So it sounds very simple, and in a way it is, but it really need, you really need discipline to do it. But everybody can do it. It's, it's, in, it's in all of us. It's in all of us. But sometimes, you know what I think, Dan, that sometimes also, though, the news don't help us because, you know, they say good news is no good news. So when we put the TV on, it's only negativity and everything that what goes wrong, as you said, never the things that go, that goes well. What do you think as human being, we are so uh, interested in, in bad news? I mean, oh, maybe, I know they feed the news to us, but apparently the media think is what yeah. we want to hear. I, I mean, yeah. It's How the same can we here. change that? Yeah, it's the same here in Holland. And uh, I, I think the media, I also have one, a whole chapter about that in my book. The media is something we have to be very careful uh, with. Too. So in Holland, it's now 25% are careful uh, with watching the news, for example. I don't know how it is in the, in the States, but I think it's, it's the same. Yeah, and it, for the media, bad news is good news. Yeah. But the thing also is, it, it, it goes two ways. So, of course, it is we are consuming it, consuming it because of the black dot. Yeah. The media knows it. This is how it works. So if you put bad news out, we are the ones clicking on it behind our laptops. And maybe we should also do that. So I, uh, that would be an advice not to watch it that much or if you watch it always do it from some kind of distance True. so that means that you know how it works and then go for the other news also the good news but there is not a lot of good news there's the thing one of the things that i think this covid 19 has really uh, done for the world and i hope this trend will stay alive at least it's my opinion because i see people tuning in every day because they want to be cheerful cheered and happy i think because the news are only bad news and we're already all quarantining at home and not feeling the best. I think this is an opportunity for, let's say, people like us, the normal people, to give the message, to go live like I do and just share what we want to hear. What Because you want to feel good. Why do we want to know that there are only bad... And you know what, Dan? It's funny because, as you said, the dot is so small, but the, the wide around is amazing. It's big and... and Nobody mm -hmm. focus on that. So I think it's, 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 it's good that, uh, thank you for being my guest today. I think we have to try to all together to, to keep doing this, to bring the news that we want to hear, the positive things. I totally agree. And I hope this is one of the outcomes from COVID-19. So I that, hope so too. That media will focus more on good news. And it, it, it should not be a good news show, but let's talk about balance. Yes. That would be fantastic. Balance. Because if you make people scared, if you make people afraid oh. by the news, the thing is, people feel bad and people take wrong decisions. It is not the, the right energy, also in complicated times like this. So let's hope it changes. I think it did. I mean, I interviewed so many people during uh, uh, do, during this, this COVID-19 and I interviewed also some people that are really celebrity, always on the run. And they told me that actually through COVID-19, they slow down the path of their life and they have become, they have realized that they are, first of all, they are brothers, sisters, fathers. So I think he has really made the whole world more like a human one. And I think because of that, we start also to yeah. realize, hey, let's be grateful for, because all the things like seeing each other, uh, embracing each other, shaking, it was, we gave it for granted for so long. And I think now yeah. we're going to, gratitude is something that is coming back, I think, big time when yeah. this is going to be over. So, yes, real important things 
show up now. Yeah. And people ha have a chance to get out of the rat race and think about their, their lives. It's good for the environment. So there is a lot going on. And also the, for the healthcare workers, oh. the recognition they got now, because these are the jobs that are so important. So there's a lot of positive things uh, going on. Yeah. And yeah. And also we, we have to focus on ourselves and get the mental hygiene right. So it is just as important as washing your hands and social distance. It's true. Focus I, I, fa I found on the internet some pictures of you. You have kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I always wonder, there are a few things that are so important and sometimes at school, I mean, I went to school and they, I studied psychology, by the way, like you, and they told me history, geography, mathematics, but I never had a lesson in, as you said, in what we think is where we are going. So don't you think, I saw uh, your pictures with you with kids, I guess you go to school also sometimes to, to talk to the kids. Yeah, yeah, Why, yeah. don't you think that somebody, maybe you should do it in Holland at least, to 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 uh, JJ showing some pictures of you uh, with kids. Don't you think that it's important that first of all there is going to be classes for parenting because any person can be a parent and out there they are going to be. Somebody said in twenty years we are going to have uh, kids that were raised uh, homeschooled by parents uh, drunk at home, which is true yeah. <laughs> because. So don't you think parenting should be something that people should yeah. learn and kids should be educated to be healthy in the brain. Yeah, yeah. I, I wrote an article about it and I got a lot of comments because I was helping my daughter uh, with her homework and, I, and she had to, 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 to read about Roman uh, buildings and how they were built and she just didn't care. So I was thinking, what if we cheat, teach our children about mentality about their thinking about how to solve problems yes with friends for example because she is now 10 and sometimes she has problems with friends let's talk about how conflicts occur and how to change it and how to do it for that is so but one of the comments were from some psychologists they now work with that on the dutch schools oh good it's not a subject as important for example as math but there are some initiatives and because they, these are the things, if you look later in life, relational uh, problems, issues, those are the things that really put people down. And it's not all the little facts that you have to learn in school yeah. that you later on think, wow, that was great that I had to learn that. No, it's not that. But I'm very hopeful that, that also that will happen, not because of COVID-19, but I see some initiative in Holland. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't I don't see much here in America. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge follower of Tony Robbins and Jim Rome. So I've been f here myself because I'm a big dreamer. I'm always been. But, you know, some people, because I'm a big dreamer and I see my reality, I always think what I put in my mind, I can achieve, which is true. But many people, you know, are more like low key. They're like, you go where the God wants you to go. I'm very religious. But I think that God has gave me the myself that if I really want to do something and I do it correctly, I can do it. God, God, yeah. God, I'm very religious. So I don't see, I, I don't see in Holland, I'm in America, that trend much happening. They, they just start now actually to um, bring to the plate the fact that uh, people needs to eat healthy. I'm um, being European, born and raised in Italy myself, then I, I, I always say that in, in Europe, we are unfortunate. I know I have many American friends. We are kind of more healthy because, for instance, we cook food for scratch. We all know how to cook. And our kids, they, they never had to call our cereals in the morning. They just have more. Healthy. So they start now, actually, to teach the children how the importance of food. So I hope very soon there is going to be also something in the school to teach kids, kids to yeah. to. Yeah, it, it, it all starts with education, of it course. Is. But yeah. but it is I I think I'm very I don't I think it's realistic. Other people say it's I'm a positive thinker, but I think the future is so bright oh. that there are many people who, who say, oh, uh, the world is wrong. We are doing the the bad things. But if you compare our lives nowadays to 50, 60 oh. years ago, it is fantastic, fantastic. And I'm absolutely sure that it's going to improve. So my children, 
or, or will have better lives than I had. The environment, because what people underestimate is the, the capacity of the human race. We can do so many things. And also this COVID-19, if, if I just looked what happened, all the voluntary work, all the things, the, all the initiatives. So it's we are not a, a very bad species. Huh? So if it is, that's what many people believe in, but I don't believe that. And also psychology uh, uh, nowadays, no, that is not the case. You yeah. see it now you, coming in, 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 in times like this. It's a positive thing. It will be better. I, I think this COVID-19 is an opportunity. It's an yeah. opportunity to really uh, refocus, reset our brain, my, rethink our lives and get out of it better than ever. I, I really yeah. see it. I mean, it's very tough for me because as a performer and then all my show is being canceled. And actually yesterday was a bad day because even the show that were scheduled for October, now I'm moved to next year. So I'm going to have like, let's say the whole year with no work, so no income. So it's going to be, but so I was scared for yeah. a second. And then I thought, hey, maybe this is an opportunity that the universe is giving me to do something that maybe is still still doing what I do because I keep thinking and uh, singing and doing these things. But maybe it's an opportunity for do something that maybe is even more meaningful. For instance, yeah. I've been bringing so much joy having uh, people sharing my friends, you one of them, even though we never met personally, I hope to do it next time I'm in Lola. We we bring some, some good vibes out there and I see growing everyday people, people are are looking forward to to see something nice. Yeah. So, but also your focus, your focus is on some, on opportunity. Yes. And when you do that, you immediately ha have more positive emotions, and the things you do are more positive, and you you get different results. That's that's how it works. But the thing also now is that we, I so much hope that we get rid of the anxiety of the fear. Because fear is a big opponent. Yes. Because all creativity is lost if people are scared. Yeah. And so that is a, a real challenge now, is to get rid of the fear because it, it kills creativity. But, but how do you and think? I mean, I know that there are many people watching uh, that are scared because they lost their job. Uh, you know, and in America, sometimes, yeah, I mean, you can be really alone. There's no much help from the state and stuff like that. So how do you think we can get loose of the fear? Because I, I hear of a lot of people that they are fearless also because we don't know when this is going to be over. No. There is no deadline no. to this uncertainty no. thing. So no. what can we well, do? Well, the, the, the most important thing is that, that you focus on the things you can control. And uh, don't focus that much on the things you cannot control. So the thing is, uh, 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 be careful with watching the news every day. Don't do it the whole day. Uh, yeah. Eat healthy. Exercise uh, uh, if possible. And try to, to get some sleep because now you, you, you have the time eh, to, to rest. Yeah. And the other thing, of course, is take care of your thinking. Really take care of your thinking. Watch the white page. Do that. That's mental. Stay mentally healthy, because that is so um, important. So focus on the things you can control. So true. I, I, you know, uh, m music is my uh, uh, way of stay sane. And I know I have some friends uh, actually I'm in contact with uh, that I know had this fear, and they found uh, um, comfort and uh, security in hobbies. They picked up things they never had done, like me, music, singing. So maybe that is a way of something we can do, just do something exactly. we never had the time for. Exactly. Because life is about emotions. Yeah. So if you do those things and you get those positive emotions, your immune system goes up, your creativity goes up. It's all for the better. So that's a very good thing to do. Well... You could Very have not important. picked up a better time uh, than to write your book. Than this, but because I mean, it came out in January. But when did you start working at the book? Longer before? Oh, ten years ago. <laughs> ten <laughs> years ago. But also during that time, my two kids were born. So that means that I could not write constantly. <laughs> but I wanted as many uh, examples in it as possible. 
And uh, so it just took a long time, but it, uh, I just could not let go what I saw happening around me. Wait. And uh, super I think it, happy. Yeah, that it needed to happen now because, I mean, I, I, I'm not in Holland, but I would say every Dutch person should buy the book, <laughs> oh, right? <yes. laughs> That's a very good advice. That's a very good, yeah. You, you, I should be your agent. So everybody, <laughs> iedereen in Nederland moet de boek open. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I, I really, I really, I really do believe, you know, sometimes um, I think nothing, there's no coincidence. Don't you believe that there are things, this was your time to, to do that. You had to come yeah. out in 2020 and then these things happen. That is super interesting also what you say <laughs> now, because the last page before my book was uh, printed, I had to put that subject in. Because there were people around me, older people, who said the same thing. They said, well, Dan, strange things happened in my life. That things came right at the right moment. I don't know what it is. Is it the universe? I don't know what it is. I had to put it in because that's also a very interesting subject. But maybe for the next time. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you can write uh, reset your mindset one, two, yeah. three, four. There's because oh. I think I don't know. Do you do, you do also? Um, um, you say um, seminars where you uh, you help yeah. people one by one. I think you're going to have a lot of new clients uh, when the situation so is I did, over. I did, I did one on one coaching, but what we wanted to do is to get it more out with more people. But now with COVID nineteen, of course, that had to wait. Hey, so you can do it online. You can do yeah. it on Zoom, and we can all get in there and listen to you. Let me think about it. Good idea. Yeah, I think I should really be your agent. Yeah, I should. Uh, you, you know, I have to thank us, by the way, Natalie and uh, Natalie and uh, Moser and uh, Pan from Prague, because uh, you came in as the last um, in the last moment. And but I mean, yeah. I have to thank them because this was very a very good moment. I think to have a talk with a person yeah. like you. That's yes. what we need. Yeah, and but I, I think if you ever get tired of Natalie and Pam, I'm gonna be your agent. Okay, thank you, thank you. I will. <laughs> I will tell them. But I think they are watching. Very... Are they watching, JJ? They are watching. I love the girls. They're, <laughs> they're both I... amazing. I... I love them. Yeah, they are watching. I don't know. Did JJ anybody had questions? Because I know we are all mentally insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all very grateful to you, JJ, saying of your advice. And of course, I'm going to read all the answers. And if there is something that I can tag you, I will tag your name then so you can yeah. also answer uh, to them. I have a question I ask to all my guests. Of course, I'm born and raised in Venice, Italy. Have you ever been to Italy? Oh, yes. Every year I go there. Oh, I've where? Where, Venice, where have you been? I go to Peschiera del Garda. Peschiera La del Garda, Garda of course. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, you go only to Peschiera del Garda? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I've You're... been in Venice and I'm thinking about Venice. You know about the canals that are very clear now because of COVID-19? With fishes? <laughs> Fish, I know. That's fish. another thing that I said. It's it's been like uh, you. Know, I, I don't want to believe that uh, it happened. Uh, somebody did it, but it's been a good thing for the world. Canals yeah. in Venice as fishes, yeah. clean water. We can see yeah. the the. So it's it's the nature. The, the is animals so are happy. Yeah. yeah. Right. So and so if you've been to Italy and you go to Peschiera del Garda, do you love Italian food? What do what, and, and and do you cook at home? I am the one that cooks. Oh, good. And, uh, yeah, for my children and my wife. And you know what the comment is? Yeah. It's not bad. It's bad. So I'm not a big cook. <laughs> but, I, but I like cooking. But I, and I like uh, Italian cuisine, but I like cooking. I'm not the best cook. So every Saturday, then, and you should know, you're going to be one. Uh, every Saturday, I teach to cook something. I'm not a great chef. I can cook, and, but because I think we are what we eat, my whole life as a little girl, I've learned to eat what I love, what is healthy for me. So every Saturday, I take all the camera things that I have here in my office to my kitchen, and I teach people to cook uh, dishes uh, that can be sultry or sweet. And you know what it is? I see all the people at home. They cook. They do my recipe, even with children. So... Maybe you can watch me on Saturday. I know it's late at night, but you can watch on rerun. No problem. I'm a follower. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks. then if you ever made one of my recipe with your kids, please take a pictures of yourself, I, the book I, and my recipe. <laughs> yes, I will. 
<laughs> and uh, and um, and uh, I, I mean, do you cook with your children, or is only a thing that you do and no. your wife and only children are only there? Cooks. And uh, what they all like is spaghetti aglio olio. Aglio olio. Oh, so you don't put the peperoncino? Uh, I put it in, and uh, there is one little trick, and maybe that is not allowed. But I put in bouillon. Is that the right word? Bouillon. That is that. Yeah, that, yeah, that, bouillon. That, yeah, we, yeah, it's uh, like it's bouillon in English too. I guess. Or, and where do you put it? Where do you put it? You put it in the in the you sprinkle in the pasta. Yeah, in the pasta, in the in the olive oil, and okay. it is. Yeah. It gives so a little bit of a keep of a salt or something. A little salty, and and yeah. that that's that's what they like. Next time, try also. Do you guys have in in Holland like uh, the 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 bread, the, the bread crumbles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breadcrumbs. Have you ever tried? Yeah, in in America, also in Italy, they have some breadcrumbs. They have already some spices inside. So when you put your aglio olio, you can put some of those things. So it gives like not too much because you can. But it gave like a, a little kick. It's crunchy. I'm okay. sure kids may try yeah. to try, try it. Maybe it's as an idea. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. But it's typical uh, Italian. Because oh, I, pasta aglio e peperoncino, I think, is one of the most simple dish and is one of the the, the most uh, delicious food, and everybody yeah. can make it, right? Yeah. That's something sometimes I'm bothering here in America because not many people cook. I had a couple of weeks ago a very famous journalist here in Las Vegas, uh, John Katsilomedes. I don't know if he's watching. He always watch, and he used the oven to put his hats inside. <laughs> He doesn't cook. <laughs> so I love him. He's half Italian. So I said, John, you have to cook. I haven't convinced him yet. So to eat okay. outside and or to buy already made food is kind of an yeah. American thing. But I try to convince everybody, guys, four ingredients and you can cook something delicious. Yeah. And it's really nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No so more. from now on, I think if you follow me on Saturday or you send me an email, you say, hey, Jad, I need to cook something for me and my wife. You will surprise them with something delicious and very easy. <laughs> Don't tell him I did. So this is my recipe. You can say it's yours. <laughs> they will be so happy. <laughs> they will be so happy. Then it's, it's been such a, such a joy to have you as my guest. We never, as we said before, uh, we never met before. No. But no. Uh, funny enough, because I lived in Amsterdam for five years in 2000. So uh -huh. we were all young so and kids. Let's meet when you're here. That's when I go thing. to Las Vegas. Well, when you go to Las Vegas, you have a sister here. You know, Italian, we make, uh, this is sign language for friends and family. So I'm always saying my friends became family. This is another thing that I try to do. Deaf people, deaf people now who are wearing masks are going crazy because they are so isolated. Can you imagine what is happening in their brain, Dan? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm trying yeah. to do that. But anyway, now you have a family member in Las Vegas now. So I, I cannot wait for this to be over and... Uh, we're going to get together. But I see a lot of people thanking us. I, I'm the first one to thank you. And uh, please let me know when you have in this book. T tell the title again, because I'm sure there are some Dutch people. Say another. What is the title from the, from the, the um, book in the Netherlands? Reset your mindset. It gaat over the belangrijkste vraag. What gaat er goed? The most important question. What goes well? Exactly. I love that. And I love the fact that you said that we have to be graceful. I oh, mean, yes. gratitude is one of the greatest things we possess. And I, I'm glad that it's one of the first things you said. So for that already, you know, everybody I love and like, they make fun here. They say that I love and like them because they are Italian. So I make you honorary Italian. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks. because I like you, I love you. So now you are honorary Italian. You can say, Jada, make me honorary Italian. I want to thank you so very much for being my guest. And uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to see you soon when this is over. Let's keep positive. This is going to be over soon. And uh, yeah. the world is going to be a better place. 2.0 is going to be a great beginning of something amazing, actually. The future is bright. And it was a real honor talking to you. Thank you. Me too. Thank God bless you. Stay safe over there and the best of everything. Thank you, Dan. Thank have you. a, good, have bye a bye. good night. Good night to you. <laughs> So, guys, this was Dan. It was it fantastic of what I told you? I never met him before, of course. But when uh, Natalie and Pam, uh, of course, uh, the managers of Gordon, they said, hey, we also have contact with this guy. Would you love to have him? I said, sure. You know, I'm always, I'm, 
I'm always positive and that said doesn't mean that my life is perfect because even my life is messy you know I told you my parents were sick and I couldn't go there and I had to deal with those distress and there is no work there is no job you guys are sending donations and I thank you for that but of course I try not to get stressed I try to to see this as an opportunity first of all it's been an opportunity because you guys have been with me every day and I've been able to get closer to many of you I've been able to communicate with some of you daily which I never had before the time to do because I was always in our airplane going somewhere so you see COVID-19 is not after all that bad and before I leave you by the way I would also ask you kindly all of you to um, join me on uh, to subscribe on my YouTube channel I know many of you did it and I asked that because of course uh, every time I post videos over there and if you are not subscribing to my channel you don't get the pump in that say Jada just post a new video so if you really lo love me and you love my music and you want to always be up to date to everything you just go to youtube.com slash Jada Valenti and you spell Jada G-I-A-D-A-V-A-L-E-N-T-I and you say following so I want to see how many people are listening to me and will be following me after this well you know that before I say goodbye I always leave you with the sun and I thought that today was appropriate to see something which is the same color of the shirts I'm wearing because life is pink la vie en rose maybe if the music starts Remember guys, this is a live stream. It looks like a television show though. So I'll, JJ is going to start the music again in a second. And so this, by the way, is a song of Edith Piaf. You know, it's one of my idols. And it's, uh, if you don't speak French, because I'm going to sing in French, I'm thinking when he embraced me and he says to me uh, beautiful words of love, my life is beautiful. Hi is and he is mine that's the reason why my heart beats which is true love friends and family all together we make the world a beautiful place so let's go to paris with la vie en rose <laughs> Que se perce sa bouche Voilà le portrait de Saint-Retouche De l'homme à quel j'appartiens Quand il me prend dans ses bras Il me parle tout bas Je vois la vie en rose De mots d'amour, de mots de tout le jour, et ça me fait quelque chose. Il est entré dans mon cœur une part de bonheur dont je connais la cause. de bonheur dont je connais la cause c'est lui pour moi moi pour lui dans la vie il me l'a dit l'argerait pour la vie dès que je l'aperçois alors je sens en moi
beats well it surely does beat and uh, it beats even uh, it beats even uh, more happier every time when i'm here with you let me remind you a few things by the way tonight uh, actually june third june the third i'm gonna have as my guest uh, billy Streech, which is one of the greatest you heard me talk about him several times he's one of the greatest piano player we have in the united states in america and as an accompanist for singers he's been accompanying liza minnelli just to mention one of the million superstars he's been played with he's gonna be my guest june third and during covid 19 every thursday at 8 p.m from his appointment in new york he does a show called um billy's 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 place it, he has a drink and at the piano he sings and what i love about billy is is like a wikipedia of knowledge about music and every time he says so many things about the sounds he's performing every show as a team so tonight at 8 p.m. Uh, New York City time, so 5 p.m. for us in Las Vegas. Tune on Billy Streetch and you write Streetch, S-T-R-I-T-C-H. It's amazing. You're going to love it. And it's going to be my guest uh, June 3rd. Talking of guest, next week is going to be, uh, this week was fantastic because I brought you to the Netherlands. You know, this is the sign for the Netherlands, for all the people that can hear so we went to the Netherlands this week and next week we're coming back to the United States and uh, I'm gonna have my guest on uh, Tuesday um, the Bronx Wanderers which are celebrities here in Las Vegas but we love them all over the United States I'm gonna have father and son so Vinnie and Dolphy and Vin A I know many of you love them so they're gonna be my guest on Tuesday then on Wednesday I'm gonna have eight time Grammy winner producer uh, and um, of course also the founder of Concord Records Greg Field it was the drummer he's one of the best drummer in america i played with ella fields Herald. it was the last latest drummer of uh, frank sinatra you always have amazing story and he would be appearing with his beautiful wife who she's an amazing singer and artist monica mancini mancini yes the daughter of henry mancini who wrote moon river so it's gonna be an amazing episode wednesday and then on thursday of course, I asked my dear friend David Miller of, Il, of the group Il Divo, the very famous group Il Divo, to um, send to be my guest and share some cheers and love and music uh, with me. So next week is going to be like a musical uh, week for all of us. Saturday, of course, we were talking to Dan Jensen today, my guest. I will be cooking. I'm going to move all the studio in the kitchen and I'm going to be making a delicious pasta from the north of Italy for Trentino Alto Alto is a pasta with speck and rucola there is some cream and some cheese that's the pasta with speck and rucola if you're wondering what speck is speck is a protected kind of meat that they sell on Trentino Alto Adige which I will I will tell you on Friday is on the northern side of Italy you can find it also in a lot of uh, deli stores uh, around the country I found it here in Las Vegas too normally on Italy but Italy the store is closed I found it on the Siena uh, deli but you find it in many many places uh, year. And if you cannot find a speck, you can find any kind of other meat that you like. I'm going to give you uh, some suggestion. You can find, you can put ham or you can put, you can put uh, um, raw ham or cooked ham of um, pancetta, bacon. If you find something uh, smoked is even better. And rucola salad, of course, you find it everywhere. Some nuts and some Parmesan cheese. You're going to love it. It's easy to make and super delicious. I made it actually last week for JJ. That's why it came back to my mind. Hey, that pasta. So um, what else? Uh, if you like this episode, of course, and you want to see the one you have missed or you want to rewatch one of your favorite episodes, you can go on jada.live and you can watch there and at your earliest convenience at your home time every time those episodes i see a lot of you roger scallion were there diane fiorentino you are in los angeles at ucla having your eye surgery eye surgery i don't know how you say eye surgery tomorrow but i wish you the best of everything you know i send you love and all kind of positive vibes to you and i hope i was right that this is the sign for thank you I want to thank you, Diane, if this is the good sign for everything you've been doing for me. Actually, I really love the fact that I've been including also the deaf people. You know, every day you need to, we need to learn something and I, I like to learn sign language. And I know you've been learning with me. This is the sign for I love you. And I really love you, you all friends and family. So today was a beautiful day and tomorrow is going to be another beautiful day. So guys, 
I hope you're gonna be all with me tomorrow, same time, same place. Tune in tonight, 8 p.m. to see Billy's place on his Facebook page. Thank you again to my guest, um, Dan Jensen, and to um, Natalie and uh, Pam in Holland for arranging all these amazing guests for me. And I leave you with a smile, and I tell you a domani. Un abbraccio alla mia mamma e mio papà e a tutta la mia famiglia. Ci vediamo domani, dear friends and family. I love you all. A domani, ciao. But I truly hope that I'll see you here sometime, same place. And until then, my heart just say, Danke schön, dear old Danke schön. Thank you for seeing me again. Though I'm here in my solitude I know you are there And in my heart I smile again And so I sing here in my solitude Waiting to see you same time, same place And I can't wait to say again Danke schön, danke schön Danke schön, dear old Alfie de Seine. See you tomorrow. A domani.